The ideal team size is 4.6, or so say the guys in white coats that make a living out of answering such questions. As soon as you hear that number, you can probably think of plenty of objections. Assigning a specific number, let alone a number with a decimal, is rarely the best way to answer such a significant question. Who gets to be the .6 team member anyway? But the question is worth asking. Is there such a thing as an ideal team size? One that will allow productivity to skyrocket? This video is based on a blog post by Daniel Threlfall. Read his full, more detailed post at teamgant.com. And if this information helps you out, it would really help us if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. The question of ideal team size has enormous implications for businesses. Hiring people costs money. Hiring the wrong people costs even more money. And hiring too few people is an expensive mistake as well. But hiring too many people is equally wasteful. Don't forget the social, dynamic, and chemistry issues too. If you hire too many people, you wind up dealing with social loafing, political infighting, workplace clicks, more complex workflows, and a much higher payroll cost. This is why a lot of hiring managers try to lock down the perfect size for a team. You're trying to find that sweet spot in productivity and cost savings. The problem is that many go about it all wrong. So where do you begin? Conventional wisdom says that two heads are better than one. The more people you have working on a project, looking at the angles and contributing ideas, the better off you are, and the more likely you are to hit your goals. Having more hands on deck is attractive, even if you're talking about building a small team that's just a bit larger than what you have now. But throwing more people at something doesn't automatically produce success. If you act on that belief, it requires you to treat each individual as an equally measured solution, like perfectly molded stackable cups that each hold an equal amount of volume. But people don't work like that. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos was opposed to growing teams in this way. According to an article in the Wall Street Journal, one former executive recalled that at an off-site retreat where some managers suggested employees should start communicating more with each other, Bezos stood up and declared, no, communication is terrible. He wanted a decentralized, even disorganized company where independent ideas would prevail over groupthink. What was his point? Isn't improving communication a good idea? Well, of course it is. But Bezos was more interested in allowing innovation and independent decision-making to thrive, aided and abetted by the right communication, not more communication. Bezos coined the concept of two pizza teams. That is, if a team couldn't be fed with two pizzas, then it was too big. His focus on the independent is a smart approach. When you focus on the team's size, you ignore the individual. The bottom line? Communication matters, and more communication reduces team productivity. The proper team size for maximum productivity is probably going to be in the 5 to 7 person range. Management and leadership experts from Pennsylvania's Wharton University discuss this approach in great detail, acknowledging that size should not be the first consideration when putting together an effective team. Jennifer Mueller, former management professor at Wharton, says it like this. First, it's important to ask what type of task the team will engage in. Answering that question will define whom you want to hire, what type of skills you're looking for. A subcategory of this is the degree of coordination required. If it's a sales team, the only real coordination comes at the end. It's all individual, and people are not interdependent. The interdependence matters because it is one of the mechanisms that you use to determine if people are getting along. After understanding the task or the goal of the team, the next step is to understand the composition of your team. What are the skills that are necessary in order to achieve the goal? When you identify the necessary skills and the roadmap to reach the goal, then you can look to team size. While the insight from Wharton management professors make it easy to define the necessary team size you should aim for, factoring in workload tends to complicate things. A project manager may feel that the scale of a project requires more people in order to hit a deadline. Unfortunately, adding people for the sole purpose of increasing productivity can generate the Ringelman effect. The Ringelman effect is the tendency for individual members of a group to become increasingly less productive as the size of their group increases. Basically, the potential of a larger team experiences process loss, leading to poor output. The takeaway? Bigger isn't better for productivity. Harvard psychologist J. Richard Hackman was of the mindset that larger teams led to reduced productivity. In his studies, he found that as you increase the number of individuals, it wasn't necessarily the number of bodies that was the issue. It was the communication links which had to be maintained that created a great deal of strain. As the number of links between people rises, so do the opportunities for miscommunication, project delays, and human error in deployment and execution. This coincides with Jennifer Mueller's theory on relational loss. 
the idea that you feel like you're receiving less support and engagement as a group or team grows in size. As a result, you perform worse and productivity drops. Mueller believed the growing number of links between people based on Hackman's formula led to a deterioration of individual performance as well as a breakdown in communication and relationships. In her studies, even organizations with a large focus on coordination still showed compelling evidence for relational loss. When productivity issues arise, it's not uncommon for leadership to respond quickly and begin examining the performance of the employees in a group. That typically results in requirements for better communication, more accountability, disciplinary action, coaching for individual employees, and sometimes the addition of new people to a group to boost productivity, all which do very little to improve productivity. It's naive to think that productivity issues can be resolved with a specific team size. Too many leaders attempt to manage employees into being more productive. What should occur is an audit of the processes where teams are built from employees specifically based on what needs to be accomplished. You eliminate the need to audit and continually add to it in the hopes of maintaining productivity. You've built a team that is exactly the right size with the right people who can accomplish the goals of your project. Here's the conclusion. No matter how you approach it, there will never be an ideal number you should aim for when building teams. Why? There are simply too many factors to consider, both human and business, that impact performance. Next time you need to put a team together, don't obsess over the right number. Instead, ask yourself these three questions. What is the goal of the team? What skills are needed to achieve that goal? And how many people do I need to cover the skill gaps? Be sure to arm your team with the tools and resources they need for effective communication and the right project management tool. The right toolkit will support the team's skills and will be a major contributing factor to the overall productivity of your team. What's your approach to building teams? Have you experienced team bloat and limited productivity or do you run smaller, more efficient teams? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.